Welcome everyone to another episode of the Campus Waterfowl Podcast. I'm your host, Derek Christians, and if you're watching this episode, there's five of us here sitting around the table, and our actual podcast recording kit that we use only allows a max of four. So I'm actually going to sit out on this episode and let these guys talk uh, and discuss everything that they know about why we're here. So we're actually here at South Dakota State this week, and my alma mater, Go Jacks. These guys, we've actually hunted with them in the past. Uh, gave them a call. We're here this weekend for spring snows. So these guys are kind of the experts in the area, and I want them to kind of talk about their experiences and, and what they know uh, about hunting spring snows. And I'm going to hand it over to Jack here, who's going to be our my sit-in host, I can call him. So. Take it away, Jack. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Jack Hines. I'm a junior operations management student here at SDSU. My name is Noel Myers. I'm a junior biology secondary education major here at SDSU. Uh, my name is Parker Davis. I'm also a biology secondary ed uh, major at SDSU. My name is Ryan Lures. I'm a junior uh, mechanical engineering student here at SDSU. Uh, first, before we get started with the podcast here, I want to take a second to talk about uh, Kent and Benelli, uh, just wanted to thank them for uh, sending us some shells to shoot this weekend and a couple of sweet guns from Benelli. Um, pretty sweet to get to test them out. Uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah, so uh, we actually started a YouTube channel. Uh, what, what was it? O- is it over a year ago now? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, over, yeah. over a year ago. Last fall we and, started. And uh, it actually it, it's actually done pretty well for us now. We're almost a, almost a 90k yep. subscribers. Um, really blew up for us. Uh, we owe a lot to Derek. He gave us some tips and tricks uh, right when we were starting. But, uh, yeah, you guys will have to check it out. It's uh, called East River Waterfowl. But we figured we'd give you guys a little bit of context as to how we came about and how we met. Uh, I'll open up to you guys and tell them that story a little bit. <laughs> um, let's see. Well, it all started with me and Dave. No, just kidding. But, yeah, <laughs> me and Dave did go to high school together, so we knew each other. We've been hunting together since uh, probably 10th grade. 10th grade, yeah. yeah. And then also fishing together uh, competitively. So that's how we know each other. But then when we came to school, we met Nolan and Jack. Jack um, in the bathroom. You met Jack in the bathroom. (laughs) Yeah. Me and Jack shared a floor our freshman year. So we were were floor mates. Um, And then, uh, let's see, how did we meet Nolan? First day in the the weight room. (laughs) Me, Jack, Dave, (laughs) we're kind of all moving as a crew on the first day. We're we're trying to find, find people, meet people, have fun. We're playing spike ball at the gym. We go into the gym looking around there's this kid on the squat rack squatting i don't know 405 probably first day <laughs> first <laughs> day this boy. kid's just Big getting boy. it in the gym and yeah. i think either either he came up to us or we went up to him and someone recognized the dive bomb hat and we got to talking about hunting and and the rest is history from there um we hunted together all fall of our freshman year every day every weekend scouted together that's when we really got close, and then sophomore year became roommates in an apartment. That's when we started the YouTube channel. Now we're here in a beautiful house. Yep. yep. Yeah, pretty sweet uh, story. Hunting definitely brings us, brings people together, that's for sure. Right. Done some, for sure. some awesome trips through it, too. But, yeah, so uh, today we are out uh, in the spread for our first full day. Uh, we hunted a little bit last night and shot a couple, and then... Today we had a uh, pretty brutal day. We shot one goose, and uh, we were uh, really questioning everything we know about snow goose hunting. Derek said we're the experts. Uh, I don't think anyone's an expert in snow goose hunting necessarily, but uh, I'll open it up here. Uh, we're just well. We can start by talking about what we think went wrong. I don't know what, what you guys think. I, we kind of came to determine that it was the birds, but I don't know what do you guys have to say on that. I think it was probably ended up being a combination of things. There was definitely some tough birds, but I think our setup, I don't know what we could have done differently, but I'm sure there was something that was turning them off a little bit. Yeah, decoys weren't in the ground the best. We had a lot of leaning decoys, and I don't know. It's hard to say that what we did was wrong because we've killed them doing it that way before, so it's tough to say, but I don't know when you have that many flocks of big, of big flocks of birds come in and, Lock up and then hang up at 100, 150 yards. Something, something's a little wrong. So hopefully what we change tonight works out tomorrow, I guess. It is always hard to say. Um, I would say, like, when we say it's the birds, that's a nice scapegoat. But it's hard to not think about, like, oh, there's something we could do. 
Yeah. And today, I feel like we really tried everything today. Yeah. We and moved three times. We, we made move three times, so. <laughs> and just for some context, you'll have to go watch the video, but uh, we started out out of the spread today on the top end. We had all of our motion in front of us, and we ran a long spread. That's like our typical go-to spread try for migrators, especially try and get them to come down and jump in front of the geese, and then we're right there. But um, we tried everything from moving in the decoys. Uh, we tried to fix as many of the decoys as we could, and then at the end of the day, we ended up moving to an edge and changing our spread completely. But um, I don't know if you guys want to talk about height a little bit and kind of what what you guys what you guys are thinking after today. I mean, we're pretty uh, unsure of ourselves after today, and kind of talking talking about our techniques with that and whatnot for snow goose hunting. Yeah, I mean. I mean, you know, I think we'll have a lot better idea come tomorrow. I mean, we like you said, we're on the edge. I'll run an edge high tomorrow. I think the wind should be favor us better than it did today. We fought that east wind this morning. It definitely didn't help with the way the birds worked up the spread. Um, they were kind of coming over us right away, and they were just sitting on top. But, yeah, no, I I think get, trying to get to an edge edge as much as possible is probably – the best in my opinion i think we can probably all agree that'll Something. definitely eliminate that yeah. variable tomorrow yeah that's that's our main goal there um yeah i think i think the edge trying to run an edge more than anything especially now because there's not a whole ton of just like regular cut cornfields everything's either tilled or with silage so it's pretty dark um so we've been running a lot of like ditch grass trying to throw a little bit of corn stubble in there and then just try to taper it off but it di I didn't feel like today our hide was necessarily – there wasn't a ton of birds flaring. They just weren't weren't really committing. Weren't coming all the way down. No. Something was definitely off. Breaking mm -hmm. migrators, we did yeah, they find today really good. I don't, there was not Almost many stellar, lines. You could say. Yeah. Every group locked up for at least yeah. a little bit. Yeah. We brought a lot of birds down. We just could not get them past that point of yeah. getting a commitment. Shot. Yeah. It was definitely – I would say it was probably one of our – first big letdowns of spring snow goose hunting in our careers Ever, yeah. if you look yeah. back to our our freshman year our first year of hunting spring snows we we literally hit the nail on the head perfect with everything the first time like we went we went and hunted i mean me and dave hunted once earlier and did okay but we literally set up the first time and just smoked them and it was like we couldn't lose and now we're here i guess but i don't know it it that's snow goose hunting but it when it does work yeah it's pretty pretty dang sweet that's what you're there for those times when yeah. it does work so it's, it's a lot of work today was a grind makes you makes you want to quit makes you want to just not go but yeah you know that that big spin could be coming sometime soon yeah. so any one of those groups could lock in and and turn into the next group oh, that yeah. we're giggling about for the next year <laughs> yeah oh yeah and i thought like a half dozen times that <laughs> yeah it was gonna happen but yeah just we're, the way it goes we're trying to use some reverse psychology on the birds today and <laughs> told them they weren't coming in but they weren't coming in today no. <laughs> they weren't coming all right so yeah now i think we, we should kind of talk about our first experiences spring snow goose hunting and kind of what we learned in our first couple seasons and just a little breakdown of what you guys thought about our our beginning yeah are we going with uh, the spring or are we yeah we'll focus, we focus on focus we'll on focus spring. on the spring how do we start when we when it was like february and it was starting to get warm what was our game plan uh me and dave started first we met some uh we met some guys uh from school uh it's kind of like a last minute deal we met them on a friday and ended up driving to their house and hunting with them and we slept at their house. we slept at their house and never met these guys and uh it was, that was super early. Was that even March it was, yet? It was like, it might have been it was this like weekend. First, must have been first weekend. It might have been March. this weekend, but it was completely different conditions. It was snow on the ground, and it was it was cold, but yeah. there was like a couple thousand birds keeping a, a lake open um, down south. And so these guys got permission on it, and we had the decoys, and so they invited us down, and we went out there, and I think we ended up shooting like 17 yeah. We had a bunch of decoy from like ducks and honkers and stuff yeah. all day, but we 
wanted to go get Casey's pizza. Yeah, we, we had a little bit of a incident with uh, some guys, not not me and Dave, but there are some other guys that wanted to uh, make a run to the Casey's that we could see from the field, and uh, we ran to the Casey's, and we assumed the birds weren't going to fly. We come back, and there's uh, probably a K dumping in the spread, and yeah. uh, me and Dave had a little bit of a heart attack, but uh, that was that was our first experience, but that wasn't how we snow goose hunt in the spring now that was that was like a feed that was a feed that was pretty like patternable consistent we knew what was going to happen with the feed but that now we're hunting more migrators mm-hmm. that, yeah. that's what we we learned that very quickly because that's where we first started we were like we're gonna have to grind every day and scout we these were all feeds. out every oh, night yeah. looking for feeds yeah. trying to get permission yeah we were out every night and we we all got permission on some feeds and then like it was friday night I remember before, and we were having a bunch of guys up to hunt, and we were talking it up how there's birds everywhere, and like my feed was gone, Nolan's feed was gone, Ryan's feed was gone, and then Dave had like two K, two K in there, and we're all sitting there on the phone talking to each other, and we're like, "Crap, this is gonna go south." Yeah, and we have then four guys down. I'll kind of let Dave talk about what you were what you were seeing there because i think your how you were scouting was actually yeah, kind of crucial for that um i don't know based on how we were scouting i was like throughout the week you could get a feed every night it didn't matter because they were always changing and i just kind of started to realize i was like nothing sticking it, it they just don't really stick in the spring and so finally i was like i'm just gonna sit and watch where birds are flying just watch where birds are flying and then once i figure out a good flight path i'm gonna go and scout in there and i'm just gonna get permission on a field and it so happened that there was a couple thousand birds in this one field under where a fair amount of birds had been flying over and so i got permission on it and yeah and then it we hunted it for the next two weekends and it was lights out hunting so yeah uh we were we were expecting to get a couple thousand birds off of a roost that was right next to the field, which we did. We did. And there's a whole other conversation to be had with calling shots and getting better <laughs> at uh, figuring out when to shoot with snow goose hunting, but we can come back to that in a little bit. But, yeah, that that field ended up turning out to be something pretty special. We had, the birds, we had our birds show up from the roost, like, right away. And then after that, actually, we learned about the importance of an e-caller because we were having – some e-collar problems yeah. that morning where we couldn't get the e-collar on it was too cold i don't know i don't know what the deal was with it if it was my phone or what but uh me and nolan were actually walking to find a goose that we had sailed into the cattail sleuth room from, from the morning and migrators had just been rolling over us all morning and not taking a look and we got the e-collar running finally and me and nolan were walking around in the cattails and all of a sudden we just heard snow was coming over our back and we turned around and the migrator group just sucking the spread <laughs> And we were, me and Dave, me and Nolan were like, we got to get it back. We got to get back. And then the rest was history. Every group, every group from there on out, we just started pulling migrators. And, um, yeah, we, we learned the importance of, uh, having a working e-collar and fig- figuring out the volume on that thing is pretty, uh, pretty important to and, spring snows. And we learned that again in Canada because oh. we, uh, oh, yeah. we went to, uh, Saskatchewan this past fall and you can use an e-collar up there in, in the fall. And, um, the first day we forgot the dongle to connect to uh, the iPhone. Um, still ended up shooting a fair amount of birds, but you could just tell they weren't weren't doing it as good as they could have. And the next day we got it working, and it was like it was lights out. The birds were coming right coming right to the e collar, right to the rotary. So mm-hmm. you you can clearly see the difference. So that's an e collar is definitely something important to have for the spring. Yeah. On the on the topic of e collars, what do you guys think about e collar volume? So today we mess with the e collar volume a little bit. We haven't really done that in the past much. We usually run like half volume on the phone, so it's it's loud but not too loud. And I, what do you guys what do you guys think about e collar volume? I I think the best thing would be able to have your phone in the blind and like be able to control the volume because I would be ideal. I agree. Obviously, having it like high volume to reach up to start, but I think I think as they come down and if it's super loud, they it's obviously not yeah. natural. It's they're not gonna Expe- especially when they get closer to the e collar. I think it's mm-hmm. it's not 
not beneficial to have it be loud. But we were I was talking to Ryan and uh, Nolan today when we were pick, when we were moving some decoys, and there was a feed like a couple miles over, and it was just a roar, and you could see every group of migrators and traffic around just going to that sound, mm-hmm. and it that that sound is definitely a a big player in being competitive and trying to pull mm-hmm. migrators down, but. I don't know what do you, what do you think, Noel? I think we still got some testing to do. Yeah, we, yeah, we, oh, we definitely we try to run we definitely a do. louder and see what happens, maybe. But see how yep. birds are working right away, and then make adjustments. The only piece of data we have for running it quieter, I would say, is um, in the field by Will's house. Yep. Um, when we had a we had a decent day, and then we were picking up, and we picked up early because we who knows, <laughs> and. Uh, me and Jack saw this group while we were picking up, and I ran over to the e collar, plugged my phone back in, turned it on, just pretty soft compared to what we normally have it, and that group came like right in, pretty much right over top, and we we shot a bunch out of them or quite a few out of there. So that was kind of an interesting thing where it was late at night, there wasn't much wind. We kind of turned the e collar down, and it was like, okay, maybe this is something. But yeah, that that was like a that was evening still night. Mm-hmm. That definitely the being able to vary your volume thing would definitely be. Sweet. I don't know if anybody, someone's got to make something that we can change sure that up. Definitely. Oh, yeah. I, I feel like the, I feel like this just opened up how dumb our system is right now, <laughs> kind of. But yeah. I don't know. It, it, it it's constantly learning for sure with the e collar thing. Yeah. It would be. I do like Luke's idea. It would be nice to have like a speaker in the blind where you could point it out of that. That would they, be fun to experiment with. Yeah. Yeah. As, yeah. They, really as they go around you to go like this. Yeah. For some background but, context, one of the guys we were hunting with today, um, he knows a guy who kills them really good by point. He keeps the e-collar in the blind with him, which I think is kind of insane for your ear health. But, yeah. <laughs> but he points it at the birds as Insanity. they go around, and uh, apparently it just works. So I don't, I don't know. Then they're never out of the sound. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, because we always have our callers pointed downwind, and then if they yeah. get upwind of that, it's if like If you're able to have, quiet. like, a Bluetooth speaker where once you had birds over, you could turn it on, that would yeah. be yeah. ideal. I think sophomore year, that was something that probably could have really mattered when we were hunting the pasture pond, and it was super windy, and, and that was the day where we could literally see the line where they would they would be cupped, and then we think that's the sound line or at yeah, the time. Yeah, and yeah. then they, they like, Oh my gosh, what is going on? There's yeah. no sound anymore. And then they pick back up. Well, I have a theory on that. And if you ever heard snow geese get up when they're scared, the moment before they get up and it gets loud, it's quiet. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if like that triggers something in them when they're, they're yeah. like, wow, big group, they're loud, they're loud. And then all of a sudden it's like quiet, like yeah. crap. Someone's going to jump Just us or something. Response. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, that I don't know. There's constantly learning to be done with the e-collar deal, but I guess now we could shift a little bit more into. I guess we can go through a whole setup. We can talk about decoys now. Yeah. Decoys in motion. We've been having uh, continual rotary issues. Yeah. That that's one thing that has been an issue. Silosoc has got to beef them things up. <laughs> yeah. If if anybody from Silosoc is listening right now, uh, you could. Could try some uh, different gauge wire on the, the rotors. That would, <laughs> yeah. That'd be helpful. And some different all, different uh, connections for the terminals. That'd help too. But no, uh, when the rotaries are working, I think they are a really good tool. Especially when it's calm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're a key player. Yeah. What were you saying to Derek today when about them landing when we have oh, the yeah. lights going? When we do finish them, which we do. <laughs> I promise we do. When, when we do, when we do finish them, they will literally – there, if there's a road, if there's a flyer on each side, they'll literally like hover. They will in the put middle. down right will, on top. They will go in the middle of it. Last night we had that Rossi. Yeah, I guess the first we, did. we shot yeah. last night. You, they will. They will sit on it. Yeah. yeah, they like the motion. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think what we usually try to do is funnel. We use the motion to pretty much where we want to finish it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it does work. Like. I've been curious if you put if you sat somewhere else in the spread, like not even at the top of the spread, if you sat somewhere else in the spread and you had motion going yeah. over there and the sound over there, if they would go to that still. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, that's kinda interesting on the rotary side of things. But decoy wise, I don't do you guys want to talk a little bit about what our strategy has been with setting spreads? Yeah. I don't think it's been anything too special, I guess. No, but we really haven't done anything it's out re- of the ordinary. But for those who haven't done it. I guess, yeah. How would you go about it? I mean, we 
if you want to start from the beginning, when we go to set a spread, we start with where we're hiding. Yep. yep. And we are always, you're always going to have the majority of your decoys downwind. Yep. Because you need them, to, especially in the spring, you need them to start to lose some altitude and work up the spread. And usually we try to keep it thicker at the top. We, we, you want to make it look like it's going on up there. Yeah. And then thin it out as we go down the spread. And we've ran, I don't know, what do you think our spread was in the pasture pond? How long was that thing? That was like 300 yards, I bet. Yeah. Yeah, maybe more. That that thing was long. And it, that doesn't hurt in the spring. It just no. it keeps them from working over top of you, which is a no-no. But, but one thing about that is, like, you do a good job of explaining this. The difference between how snow geese feed and how honkers feed and how that changes your spread. Completely different. Oh, and yeah. how they work. Yeah. yeah. Completely different. They're aggressive feeders. They want to get ahead. They're not. Yeah. So snow geese are always going towards that top group and trying to yeah. work past each other, kind of like leapfrogging over each yeah. other. Honkers, they'll come in and they'll sometimes they'll stop at the, the first decoys they see. Yeah. And they'll short stop you. But I don't know. I think that's a, a good way to, to think about it. Some people, they see like freshman year when we had guys come out, they would see we're at the top of the spread and we have decoys 300 yards down. They're like, how are we going to shoot anything today? Oh yeah, I remember uh, uh, Tanner. I hope he, I hope he watches this. <laughs> we were, I was sitting up there at the top of the spread, and it was dark out, and everything looks way bigger in the dark. And I was sitting up there, and he comes up to me, and he's like, he's never done the snow goose thing before, and he's like, Jack, why do we have decoys three hundred yards down there? Like we are not, they're gonna land down there. They're gonna shortstop us, and he's like, we're gonna, we're gonna mess this up. I'm like just watch, like it's gonna yeah. be okay. And that is daunting sometimes when you look out there and you're like. You have decoys on the horizon, yeah. it feels yeah, yeah. like, but it definitely helps. For sure. I wouldn't say there's too much rhyme or reason in no. how you said it. I mean, as long as you have something to bring them to where you want to shoot them and you have, like, your mass at the top, I wouldn't say there's too much rhyme or reason other than that, except trying to make it as natural as possible. Yeah. Um, I mean, people do so many different things with them. Oh, some, yeah. some guys just set a big big blob some guys will leave a massive hole i mean yeah. that's what we we're doing in the fall too. yeah it just depends yeah. on what you're trying in to the fall to. fall can kind of be a completely different yeah. completely different story than the spring obviously but i think yeah. it's kind of experiment with it all and i guess find what you like and find what you're confident in and which and i don't know it. if we're confident in anything right <laughs> yeah. now after today I but i don't know about you guys but my favorite snow goose spread all time was the first spread we set freshman year spring one of the one of the first ones maybe it wasn't the first one but those those were pretty well, we did those weekends in the spring i would agree those, those, those were, were good. good those spreads were so good and i want i don't know i can't wrap my head around why like i feel like we've tried to do it every time and every time the sun comes up we're like yeah it's, it's good not the same yeah it's we, not also, the same. <laughs> we also could be thinking they're good because we're shooting birds every yeah. day yeah so, yeah i mean yeah. that's part of it that's i like part the of it. pasture pond the pasture pond was sweet i think my all-time favorite was the bale field in Canada, the oh, donut with the long okay. arms. Yeah. That was a really good spread. So, yeah, that was something new we tried in Canada because we'd seen it. Every YouTube video we watched in Canada, everyone just sets a donut. They just set a circle, put their rotaries at the top of it, and the snows just come in, go in the circle. Well, and we were running all our darks behind us. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. that was well, That's that was White Rock. Was, we yeah, saw that sick. in the White Rock video where yeah. in the past, I mean, it's tough. Specs are obviously tough to decoy. That's kind of a common theme. Not it in seems Canada, like, though. But Canada, we were running a bunch of our dark silos behind our A-frames, and they are coming over low like they are going to just decoy to the darks. And before they were able to flare, we were obviously underneath them, and we shot we shot more specs than we ever have. Yeah. And and little geese, too. We shot a lot of, a lot of darks. Yeah, yeah that, that is a – perfect example of testing different stuff with our spreads that i mean canada is an awesome place to test it because it's I a playground like, i mean no matter what you do you're probably gonna, <laughs> you're probably gonna be okay up there i mean i mean yeah, yeah. but yeah um i guess i was just thinking more about the pasture pond what do you guys what would be if you could pick a field or pasture or whatever what scenario would you pick to set up in for spring for spring snows, what would your what would be your go to? Like that's if you could get permission anywhere on anything, what would it what would it be? I mean, we don't need to say areas, but like yeah. this field. I would say setup. being able to find an edge. I like the I like the pasture. I think the water is just another attractor, especially for birds in the evening as well as midday. Um, 
I thought if I could like choose, I would say that the the pond would be a little smaller than what we had last year. Um, but I would say being able to be in a pasture where your decoys are going to pop out and feel like a little better, you can have that edge hide where that's not even a factor with all that grass, and then having something behind you too, like a field, like we had that corn behind us, which was really nice too. I think that would be the perfect scenario. In my I think head. my ideal would be very similar to the pasture pond, flatter. I yep. strongly dislike that hill. If you guys want to check out the videos, we have a couple from last spring. But it was like the pretty big, sizable pond, enough enough water to hold geese overnight easily. Yeah. And then the bank was kind of steep, and we were set up on the yeah south flat, bank. Flat would yeah. be nice. Right? Yeah, and I don't know. And then there was that fence line. If there was no fence line, flatter bank, and it went maybe it went straight in the corn. We could set up a little ways back in the corn. Yeah. I do feel like that we were a little close to the water at some points, but yeah. That was pretty ideal. I kind of miss that now. That was, yeah. I mean, today, today, today I was just makes you today miss I was, any yeah. <laughs> Today yeah, I was success. thinking about everything, but I was like, man, maybe we should have gone and looked at the pasture again. But, yeah. I mean, we still have a lot of time this spring. But what do you think, Dave? What's your setup? I don't know. I'd say definitely having water clo- close is important. I've never hunted a pasture for them, so I can't say anything about that. But I don't know. Cornfields worked for us in the past, so. Yeah. Something with water close is yeah definitely yeah. ideal. Flight line is huge too. Yeah. That's why we moved yeah. earlier yeah. this year. That, the, the migration the, the flight line that is an important thing to, to talk about. We we started we actually started hunting last weekend and we did we did okay. But compared to the flight line that we were in our freshman year and even last year, the we were just not seeing and today now. The, yeah, well, yeah, today yeah. Now, yeah, we were just not seeing the migration that that mm-hmm. we were looking for and um i think one of the big things that i like about our area is there's water around but there's not big roost water like right next to where we are Mm -hmm. no because i i don't know like one of the where we were hunting by was next earlier the last week was really close to big roost water and that was just i feel like that just hurt us yeah like every time migrators would see that they would drift that way and they wouldn't end up Mm -hmm. seeing your decoys and going towards you i don't know yeah i I think i agree a good rule of thumb for finding a migration corridor is just trying to get in between two big pieces of roost water, and there's going to be definitely flight. Yeah, yeah. They they're going to they're going to follow water. Yeah. The roost water doesn't have to be close to each other. Like the what what we're in between is like ten, fifteen miles apart yeah. from each other. Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe but even more. Yeah, probably more. Yeah. But yeah, just get in between big pieces of roost water. There's going to be good flight. Yeah. That. The flight also line. just being able to watch like Dave did that that one night, just being able to yeah. just watch and see where the birds are are running over is important too. That that flight line is huge for sure. Do you guys have anything else you want to say on flight line wise? Mm. Nah. I guess kinda we could talk about uh <coughs> what do you what do you I mean obviously it's all adults right now. Do you guys think that's what the problem is right now? I think it could be a large part of do the you, problem. I mean, I've been thinking I, on it today. I Noel's, guess we could Noel's talk looking about, like Noel's looking like wanna, it doesn't matter. I don't want to. I don't. I do. It it does <laughs> matter, but I don't want to use that for enough. today. For today, it's not the whole excuse. That's my no. least favorite scapegoat that we have. Because we had adults. We had. We <laughs> saw. We saw juvies, and we yeah. had juvies break off mm-hmm. groups that still didn't want. Yeah. I mean, last weekend we killed like we killed eighteen birds on Saturday, and I would say that ninety percent of them were. Full blown adults, would yeah. you say? I think oh, there was yeah. one juvie. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it was the one, one, yeah. one, one juvie. There's one gray guy in there, and the rest were adults. So it can be done. But I don't know. I don't know. It, I don't know if that was it. But um, just there for, is a distinct difference. That's oh, yeah. easy oh, yeah. to say. Oh, yeah. Sure. yeah. You can, we can 100% say that when the juvies show up, you know it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. There, it, it's, there's no doubt about that. Clearly. And everyone that hunts snow geese knows that. that when the juvies are here, it's, yeah. that's it's, when you're it's really going to kill them. It's on. Yeah. Yeah. But I hate to use that as like right. the reason Because it's like you know you can do You can kill yeah. adults, too. And right? we have. Yeah. It's just today was weird. Yeah. I don't know. I think you, have, you have that. But yeah. For people that don't know how their migration works, the adults <laughs> are smarter, obviously, than the juvies, and they... They tend to come through first, get back up to the breeding grounds, and the juvies follow behind. So it starts out with shooting adults, and um, later in the migration in the year, it uh, turns to a lot of juvie birds. And so 
typically the hunting is a little better later in the year, but yeah. Yeah. Like right, right now there's birds in Arkansas still just yeah. saw a video today from they're still killing pockets of juvies in Arkansas. Yeah. Which that excites me because that makes me think that we're going to get three more re- weeks of hunting. Yeah. Maybe. What are you guys thinking on that? Three more weeks. That's, you think? I don't well, know. well it's, what is it? March 2nd today. And then we have, well, we have spring, spring break, spring break and coming up. Migration did not line up this year. No. no, we the one year, the one year we all are going. Yeah, this is the first year I've ever taken. Ryan's going to be here. Be here. <laughs> Ryan's going to probably kill him, and I'm going to book a flight back from the Virgin Islands. Come on, <laughs> no, but I think yeah, well, I'm. We got a board over here that talks about uh, that we we make some predictions on. I think I'm going to put a new prediction up there after this, and that's going to say last snow goose hunt. Whatever that first weekend in April is. You think so? You think yeah. first weekend in April. I might be solo. I think it'll be no one will be killing turkeys. But yeah. No, it won't be open. That's yeah, not open. Yet. Oh, yeah. No, it's not open <laughs> yet. That's later. I. That's my prediction. <laughs> because it's it's going to be in the 50s next week. But uh, another thing that we've noticed, once the, once the floodgates open, they migrate every day. Regardless of the weather, to some yeah. extent. To yeah. some extent. If it's, if it's mild... Yeah, we had a we've had a crazy weather week. Yeah, we we went from sixty on what was Monday. that Monday sixty to Tuesday like Wednesday. five degrees or whatever. Tuesday and Tuesday. Wednesday we built. We had to go pick up the spread and we yeah. drove out, and there was open water and we drove yeah. back and it was all locked up. Yeah, and I'm I would not count that out in March. It's no something next could week, definitely next week. Happen. I think we're supposed to get snow. Yeah, I, I mean I think it's going to be slow and drawn out, but that's how we want it. Right. Yeah. And you also never know they could be through in a week too if it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Last last year we got what was it just the one weekend? Yeah. Easter weekend we had pretty much. And by the end of by like Easter Monday, there was not. Yeah, we a whole time we started there. hunting probably the peak time. We killed sixty that day, and then thirty nine. Sixty one, thirty nine. Oh yeah, sixty one. Sorry. Thirty nine. Yeah. 100. Yeah. yeah. Hundred. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, we, then me and Owen and Ryan went out one more time, and we shot like seven. We shot like tw- me and him shot like twelve on. Oh, yeah. The day after everybody left from that yeah. sixty-one yeah, thirty-nine, yeah. And then we shot eleven. Yeah. And then like four. It's it's yeah. just so variable, but I I don't know about you guys, but I feel like the years when it's really good, they're gonna be spread out. Mm-hmm. Gonna, yeah. It's gonna yeah, be so. more drawn out. There's gonna be separation, but. Yeah. Well, last year was definitely a a standout winner. That was one of the worst, I think. Yeah. Been on, yeah, on record. And the problem there was the buildup of birds we had yeah. directly to the south of us. Yeah, because of our snow and our ice on the lakes. Yeah, and then we got like four days of seventy, and everything just yeah. blew through. And then it was mm-hmm. literally the floodgates opened. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, um, I guess now we could shift more into talking about. Uh, do you want to go back and talk about shot calling? I think we could. A I, I guess I we, think that could be valuable. Yeah, <coughs> we talk about shot calling, and then also maybe talk about what our favorite flock of spring snows was, and maybe maybe get a little story time going. Sure. Yeah, if you guys have one. Oh, I, I, got got one. I got one. You got one. One hundred percent. What's what's your what's yours, Dave? <laughs> the what's one yours? that they came off of the water right next to yeah. us. Yeah, that. I got a different one. What's yours, Nolan? Oh, you'll see. All right, all right, <laughs> all right. So uh, I think now we're gonna go in and we're gonna talk a little bit about. Uh, Shot calling, because there's a pretty big learning curve in that, and a lot of times you have uh, your buddies that don't know what they're talking about in your ears Mm -hmm. uh, trying to tell you that uh, you should have waited because they're always perfect. No. (laughs) But, no, you just got to listen to your own. We'll we'll talk about that. And then also talking about uh, our favorite spring snow goose flocks that we've experienced so far. And uh, I guess we start with Ryan. Well, do you want to start with shot calling in general? Well, yeah, you can, you can talk a little bit about shot okay. calling. And then Don't start with me because I'm still thinking of a flock. Okay, okay. <laughs> Dave, what's your favorite flock? Uh, oh, we're going to flocks. Yeah, yeah you can go for, uh, go for a flock. My favorite flock is from our freshman – we're just going spring. So yeah, from our, spring. our freshman year, um, we were set up in a cornfield next to a decent-sized piece of water. Um and we showed up in the morning, and you could you could hear them out in the water. And we were like, ah, we're not going to get those because we were setting up the spread, two trucks in the field and all that. So no way we're getting those. First light comes around, it's maybe five, ten minutes into light. Like, you can, you can hardly see yet. And all of a sudden they get up, and there's a thousand birds. Just, like, they immediately came off the water and immediately, like, started coming in the decoys. And we had birds backpedaling and it's like 
something you see in crazy, crazy YouTube videos or documentaries or whatever, and it's just a long line of birds that's hooking around, and they're coming, and all you can see is birds in front of you just landing, and it's a wall. And uh, so it was super cool to watch, but we did terrible shooting, and I just remember getting too excited, and we had there was some birds landing, but I just I called the shot. Everyone pulled up and boom, 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 boom. And uh, it was a flock that probably should have dropped like 50, 60 out of. And we all go, how many did we get? And I think we got 12 in total. So that, <laughs> that was disappointing. Yeah, but it was we, it was ridiculous, and it was a super cool. We asked the age-old question, how many did we get? <laughs> One. <laughs> No, it was that, more of a race to see who could shoot their shells first. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was that was there, the beginning of us having extendos and yeah. yeah. No aiming, no aiming took no, place. No, there was no picking. We've, it was we've just, come a long ways from there. What? Well, one of you guys have another flock that? Yeah, I got one. Okay. Oh, go ahead, Ryan. All right, all right. I just thought of one. <laughs> I, think, I think they're gonna have. We're okay. Gonna have so this watch. might be a sleeper pick, so we'll oh, see. This might not be. All right. <laughs> Past your pond yeah. last year. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, no. I think I like it for a different reason than you guys will. So okay. last year, past your pond, on that weekend we shot – this was the day we shot 61. Um, we had – it was us three and then my brother and five of his brother-in-laws. So we had uh, – and, and, and we had Ben and Luke. And Ben and Luke. So we had 11, 11 or 12 guys. Were, uh, yeah, 11 that day or something. And six of them had never hunted snow geese. So my main goal of the whole weekend was for them to get one of these big spins. And this flock was one of those flocks that did it. So we were we were sitting here looking at our pasture pond, and we hear this big group of geese get up behind us. It was like our back right. And we all kind of look back, and there's this big group just lifting up off this field. And we're like, oh, they're getting up off of a feed. Maybe, maybe we have a chance here. We have some water. But also maybe they're just going to get up and go. Um, so lo and behold, they get up. They come over us from the back. And they get over this water, and then they kind of just all just hook and spin and turn. And that's that was my favorite point because you could hear all of these guys that have never hunted snow geese. They're all just, like, giggling. They're like, oh, my gosh. I think the only part better than the giggles when uh, we let it rip was after we let it rip. <laughs> and one, one of the guys down there on oh, the yeah. end. Over the top, <laughs> dude, just getting after yeah. it. It just, it. just the excitement after it, even fluff. <laughs> down there and down. that was a great group that, oh that was a great group but yeah. it wasn't that great in the number of birds we shot it was no. more great in the they, ex- no. like they, they didn't get that close they pulled yeah. up it was yeah. like they pulled up and five yards every time i look back at that footage i'm like oh like i'm yeah. surprised we dropped that many yeah. but it's still an amazing flock that was a lot of fun so yeah. also check it out on youtube channel that is another one that, 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 yeah. that, that, that that was sweet yeah, yeah. Just, whenever for me it's getting to dump that many shells. I yeah, love yeah, shooting that yeah, much in the one group. I mean, that's nuts. Do yeah. you, was that the one you were going to yeah, have, Noel? That was, <laughs> that was, that was, was that what you liked about it, or did you like something else about it? Um, no, that's what I liked about okay. it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, a lot of birds, a lot of shots. A few fell, but. On the topics time. of flocks in the spring, there – I. Today, one thing I was thinking about was if I like fall snow geese more or spring snow geese more. Because this fall, me and Dave had an experience that changed my perspective on fall snow goose hunting. But the one thing that fall can't ever beat is the crossing over spins. When you get multiple groups that come in at once and they're like sky high and one group's already working you and another comes in and you can't – it's like an eclipse you can't see the sky yeah. above. Like that, that is that is the weaving, one thing. Yeah, they're interweaving oh, layers, yeah. and, and, and that that, that, that definitely happens. happens in the fall. Yeah, but, yeah, but it's not, a, but being it's able not to as pull, common. No, no, but being able to, I think it's definitely more common with yeah. Migrators. And you don't mm-hmm. typically get them, typically getting get them coming from like a half mile high, yeah, yeah. and I, just straight dropping. It's, yeah, on the right days you can pull them from that high too, which we did today. Yeah. We were, we were, yeah. come in three quarters of the way. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If, if you watch the footage, yeah, you can see we had some that were like specks in the sky mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden they're down, but yeah. So um, you want to talk about the 120? Is that where you were going with that? Well, yeah, yeah. I was going to make a bold statement. Okay. Let's hear it. And that, that bold statement is, and maybe it's just because of today. If I, if I had the option of going on a banger fall hunt 
or a banger spring hunt, I think I would choose a fall banger snow goose hunt. If they're both bangers, then uh, what's the difference? What's yeah. the difference? The difference, but, the difference yeah. in how they decoy, and just it, it's just okay. Yeah, like because it, yeah. it was completely different to me. It was. Like, oh yeah, this fall, so this this fall, what me and Dave had another video should definitely go watch. <laughs> that. It it was di- it was completely different than spring. Oh, it was unbelievable. It they they were like they they were acting more like honkers in the sense that they were just like coming over, coming in. Like it wasn't it, was it wasn't close. the spinning. It was just like whoop, one it move was, drop. Yeah, it's like it was like a mix of honkers and ducks almost. Big groups, yeah. big groups, and but like they move fast. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, ridiculous they're more on a mission yeah, they're, yeah oh yeah especially like the weather we were dealing with then it was really yeah. cold but i don't know that maybe i feel like i'll revoke that statement at some point because spring <laughs> spring is awesome too but that i don't know i just noticed yeah. that you, it's different you definitely can't beat the volume of birds you can shoot in the fall in the yeah. spring you oh, can yeah. you can you have way more opportunities of shooting a massive amount of geese in the fall yeah. than you mm-hmm. do in the spring but spring has its own aspects like the extendos and the ability to stay in the same location and pull birds yeah. every day when it's good. Mm-hmm. That is that is something that I feel like you can shoot more consistently decent numbers in the spring. It's not as like volatile in the sense of like you could in the fall you can get skunked. Yeah. Skunked. Yeah. Like they just they, easily they just don't show up mm-hmm. at all. But yeah, I guess that was a little off topic. But um <laughs> now I guess we go in uh kind of wrapping up what do we what do you guys think about tomorrow what do you i mean what do you think is gonna go down what's the outlook you know i think there's only one way to find out uh i don't know it uh it'll be interesting i think well i'll feel a lot better knowing that we put in a lot of effort made a lot of adjustments and like definitely tried to get outside the box and just keep changing stuff until something works and maybe tomorrow morning it's going to work and then we'll be kings of the spring snow goose again but, <laughs> but until then i think we just got to keep making adjustments and maybe it'll work and maybe we'll get skunked tomorrow i sure hope it works tomorrow because we've oh I've, i just want to shoot into one group with everybody yeah i want yeah. i mean we have guys here that haven't they haven't shot a snow goose. and yeah, so i yeah it always sucks when they come out and it's not great. You and I didn't think it was going to be that. I thought it today was going to be I thought it was going so into, surefire today. Oh, this yeah. morning, I thought we were going to do really well. 60 but, degrees, sun, yeah. like good wind. I don't know. But I guess, tomorrow, yeah. I guess, hopefully they're in the mood to get down and come feed. I'm feeling pretty confident. Just because while we were moving those decoys, we had those two groups that I know on everything ever we would have shot into pretty well if if we would have had the e-collar going and we were all in our blinds yeah, yeah. so you're talking about those last two at yeah the end of the night and we're also we could all we could have we shot into really those cool. if everybody laid down and had guns yeah. but it's like we, yeah. when you're trying to do everything yeah. you don't do anything also yeah. i formulated a theory while i was out there and about what's going to happen tomorrow we'll see if it happens or not but the over to the west of our field or whatever a couple miles there was a pretty big feed and there's you could hear to the south there was more feeds going on elsewhere. Yeah. I really think that there's going to be quite a bit of traffic tomorrow morning. I hope so. Of, yeah. of birds that are, like, sitting on, like, the pond. Probably not the pond next to us, but, like, some I of that. Just so. that little water. I would love that. But <laughs> just that little water around us. And, like, it's going to be 44, 43 degrees for low tonight. So, I don't know if. What we need is some low light traffic early. Oh. Get the ball rolling. Get some confidence well, in the group, some spirit. Yeah. Raise raise the spirits a little bit, and then we can start that trigger pull. What I need to see yeah. is Henry being dialed in. I need to see yeah. Henry well, right away pulling in. the trigger. Henry, right, right now, everyone's attitude is like, when should we leave if it's as bad yeah. as today? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had to convince these guys to stay in. We don't yeah. want them to be in that position. But, yeah, I don't know. I think we're going to get some traffic early, and then I think we're, we're going to have the wind kick up. And they're still going to be migrating because it's still going to be 48 degrees for a high tomorrow or whatever. And they're going to be really struggling, and they're going to be really tired, and they're going to make some bad decisions. That's optimistic outlook, but that's kind of what I think. I think today, even though we were breaking them down, that south wind, they're just not 
as tired and they yeah. don't need to get down as much. And we've seen videos of guys talking about that and hitting on that, that yeah. their better days are when they're fighting a north wind and they're a little bit more um, low and type word? susceptible. Susceptible, yeah. That's, I mean, yeah. The, the, snow goose, yeah. the snow goose god's got it. Got to give us something for all the work <laughs> we've done. So yeah, I mean, moving I the spread like three times this week. Yeah, me and me and my brother literally got bruised hands from putting decoys into frozen ground this all week. All calloused out, right? Yeah, now. It, <laughs> it's we're definitely uh, they're getting even with us right now. But yeah, what are you guys watching. thinking? Um, obviously, you can't tell without seeing the birds. But what are you thinking? You want to change first if something doesn't go good right away in the first couple groups? Because mm. now we've eliminated the hide as a variable, in my mind, and we probably won't move the hide tomorrow. No, taking so then decoys it's away, taking decoys small, away, make the spread smaller, like okay. make it shorter. You're saying make it smaller, like just give them less to look at. Yeah, yeah, that, Le- less for those game. adult birds to look at. I wouldn't mind tomorrow only putting up our rotaries if we have them both running yeah i would agree with that okay i, like, fi- I fixed your thing so oh you did yeah you the one it. with the mud in it yep. it's all okay. mud packed in there let's bring the sledgehammer tomorrow yes we can the, do that the big sledge the metal sledge yeah i'm oh, sick yeah. of hitting stuff with a mallet yeah well, the persuader or the all oh, the big the one pound the persuader. big one okay. you're going to persuade those rotaries to work tomorrow no i wouldn't be against messing messing with the motion either i think volume too i'm I'm more curious about volume now just because we've yeah. been talking about it. but I know you guys don't agree with me, but I'm super curious to see how a small spread would work. And I think I'm going to get the chance to try it over so spring break. I think you are going to get the chance. Because That's exactly I, what I, I, think, I think some of those to. first groups this morning. Yeah, I will have to. <laughs> You'll be certain. I think some of those thinking. first groups this morning could have done it. And one thing I want to try is only using the heads. Okay. I'm gonna use, I want to use all the headed ones. I just got an idea. I okay. would agree with you. I've Here's, been thinking about that. If, yeah. I, was, if I was you – over spring break, I would go call up Pasture Boy. Okay. And I would literally just line the bank. See, that would be really interesting. That reminds me of that video on YouTube um, where the guy is in the the cattails that's like in the center of the of the water, and he's solo hunting. You know it. That was that not smack him? That was smack. That was, was it smack him? That was smack oh, yeah. him. That. And they had like a little point. Yeah, that I thought was, it was. I thought it might have been BW. Yeah, those guys. Oh, for a second. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah. our yeah. friends over there at Smack him. Yeah. <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. No. Those. That. I think that could be cool. Yeah. And and then you could really mess with the e collar, and you could still right. have it loud and get them down, and then they see it, and then it's like. I think having a solo opportunity or a small group opportunity will be good to try some stuff, which is oh, my yeah. goal. Yeah. So trial and error. Yeah. That is kind of interesting. Before I, this uh, weekend, I was almost thinking maybe we want to buy a second e-collar so we can break off into different groups. But then I was like, well, then you have to split up decoys. I don't know. I was, yeah. th- I've been thinking about I've been trying thinking a smaller about, spread. I've been, I thought about setting two spreads mm-hmm. just because I've been wanting to experiment with slightly different areas and stuff and branch out. But I think the smaller spread could definitely – come into Definitely play true. like right when there's adults yeah then i think a big spread for juvies just they just it, it doesn't yeah yeah it, it just helps mm-hmm. it helps them get down more i don't know that would definitely be interesting to try i mean yeah. we got away we got i don't know how many socks we set in the fall like 300 maybe yeah they, and we, were, we got tired yeah and we were trafficking <laughs> i mean yeah i'm sure it, just setting the heads too i'm curious to see if that they, the, the heads You're saying looks, the dive bombs? Yeah. The dive bombs and the... And the deadlies. Yeah. yeah. They look substantially better than... And I think those. the unheaded ones look substantially worse when they're with the headed ones. Oh, yeah. Because, because of the they're height taller. They're taller. and the yeah. angle. Oh, yeah. So if oh, those okay. if you don't have the stake angled right, well, they look terrible. People, yeah. that are, people that us four yeah. that know how to set them, we set them at that like back angle so they sit level. So the yeah. decoy sits fight, level. But people that ends. don't know... We yeah. should honestly tell them they set the stake straight up, but then the decoy is like this. Yeah. And then it like gets the like weird right. motion. Yeah. So if you have the wind coming this way, we put the stake in the ground at an angle like this, flattens out the back and makes makes them move better. Yeah. I think. Yeah. And they're yeah. level and they yeah. don't look yeah. They look Jake. stupid when they're like yeah. up like that. But yeah, I would agree. And then the I remember us telling everyone freshman year that when we were yeah. putting them in the ground. Maybe yeah. we gotta go back to that. I mean, well the only people but setting this that's spread true. were me and Ben. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> Yeah, and the ground was rock hard. And, yeah, yeah that did not by help. the end of that, we were like, just get them in the ground. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, but yeah, I think tomorrow will be interesting. This experience is definitely frustrating, but I think we're gonna learn 
quite a bit this spring and really get to try some stuff. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah we'll see. We'll see how she goes. We've always improved. Every year we're improving yeah. because of what we're learning. Yeah. We, so. are, we are always improving. That is for sure. Yeah. I'm I'm excited to see uh, what our senior year looks like. Yeah. Our capstone hunting project. <laughs> <laughs> we got to remember, two years ago we were in, we hadn't done this. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. So it, it's hard to compare yourself to other people because, like today, oh. when we were sitting in Dairy Queen, I'm the worst the, about this. Oh. Like ev- after every hunt, like even if we have a good one, I go on Instagram and then I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy killed 200 today. Yeah. Look at this spin. And it's like, <laughs> wow, I don't know. You can't compare yourself. Mm-hmm. To but they could have gone that. through the same. Yeah, they could have gone through the same thing for the past year, and then they had a banger and mm-hmm. posted it. But. Yeah, and then we have our days where two guys go out and shoot a hundred. Yeah, it's like it's a, you know. Yeah. Well, you know what they said. You what do they say? No. Oh, don't compare yourself to others. Compare yourself to who you were yesterday. That's how the old saying goes. <laughs> but no. no. Yeah. Well, uh, I think. What are the, we at? Fifty-five minutes. Yeah. I think we had pretty good. some pretty good conversation here. Yeah. Is there anything, anything else? I have one more add? idea for tomorrow. Okay. All right. Let's hear it, Big I Noel. think we need to have a solid what's in the can to start the day. Oh, well, Ooh. that would imply we have to make a video, so we have to kill geese tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we didn't start one with we, one today. Okay. Yeah. I guess we, we already You guys didn't film one in your truck? Foot, no. no. Okay. We, we filmed one in our truck. Did you? No. <laughs> one, one last side tangent. If you guys go over to our channel, you'll see that we usually have a substantial segment at the beginning <laughs> where we are focused on energy drinks. But uh, tomorrow, that would be – we need everybody in. That brings that. us back to our roots. We need to get that, that does bring nice back to our grounding. Roots. Yep. We pull out the old Panasonic camcorder, <laughs> energy drinks out, go back to go back to the way it should be yeah. tomorrow. Hey, many, many people may skip, but if one watches it, it's worth it. <laughs> That's right. Hey, yeah. But, yeah, I think we had some good conversation here. Yeah, hope, um, hopefully, hopefully it was they, helpful. Yeah, hopefully they learned something. I mean, yeah, if you guys could learn some stuff through us, that would be awesome. Not have to go and do trial and error like we did. But, yeah, uh, we appreciate you listening. and uh, Thanks again to Campus for coming yeah, down. Yeah, thanks, to, thanks campus. to Campus. Kent, thanks Kent, Benelli. 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 The sponsors. Hopefully. It's pretty awesome. Get, get to test that stuff yeah, out. It's pretty cool. Good times all around. Hopefully we can shoot some cool birds stuff. tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hopefully uh, you guys are going to watch uh, Campus's video and see uh, the best snow goose comeback story ever. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, we appreciate you guys watching. I think we're going to sign out here. So Let's get some sleep. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good to me. All right. All right. We'll see you guys later. Thanks see for watching. You.